Coming up, a virtual swarm in San Marcos, Texas. It's, it's good to be a family activity, and if it wasn't, then it probably wouldn't be an activity much longer. Look at this and be very afraid. And the OPA goes to the top over unwarranted pilot stops and searches. The OPA Live this week begins in just a moment. The first AOPA regional fly-in is in the books, and thousands of pilots have great stories to tell. Thanks for joining AOPA Live this week. I'm Tom Haynes. Those who came and the aviation press tell us the AOPA San Marcos fly-in was a big hit, and we agree. Thousands of visitors descended upon the airport in south-central Texas. AOPA Live's Paul Harrop found out what makes the Texas aviation community special. Let's talk about pancakes. Warm, buttery, pancakes flipped by AOPA staff. Hey, that guy looks familiar. What a way to kick off a fly-in to have some breakfast with the side of Rod Machado. My personal thought is you can catch a lot more bad guys if you chase them with a beer drum. With a full stomach, we'll set out to see the exhibitor tent. There's your friendly AOPA member services folks. And over here, we've got the squawk shop. They build headsets. Headsets that you can customize and kind of make your own and uh, you're not stuck with just one color or one design type. Their best seller? Pink camo, but more on them in another story. Out on the ramp, we've got a gathering within a gathering. The Southwest Bonanza Society made our fly-in one of their fly-outs. We thought this was a great time to be able to come together with AOPA and partner with you guys, um, just to attract a lot more Bonanza and Baron owners that are interested in having a good time. And some soupy marginal VFR in the morning wasn't enough to keep the crowd away. By afternoon, the overcast had burned off and many more airplanes arrived. Everyone had a good time. It's a good experience. We'll just be around other aviators and planes. Will and Anna Hederman came over from Houston. The B-17 was really cool watching it uh, taxi and take off. Gary and Elizabeth Larson are both aviation professionals. They read about the fly-in. Thought, you know, what a perfect opportunity to come out and uh, see what's going on in general aviation again. So. And to kind of show the support for general aviation. Gary hasn't flown GA in a while, but he's looking to get back with a bit of a push from Elizabeth. What's your favorite thing you've seen out here today? Uh, airplane wise? Yeah. Oh, I, you cannot pin me down. You have favorite. to pick one. Uh, I, I... The Cirrus said he's going to buy yeah, it for my birthday. She's a big fan of the Cirrus. <laughs> I, I... And with a community of pilots flying everything from tail draggers to turboprops, Texas is a great place for aviators, and San Marcos is a prime example of it. We think we've got about 3,000 people out here now. And this is Texas. This is aviation in Texas, you know. There's a lot of it going on. They love events like this. We've got a great day. What's the culture like for an aviator in Texas? Well, it's like pretty much like everything else in, in, in Texas. It's a big state. There's plenty of places to fly. There's a lot of events around the state. Everything's bigger in Texas, <laughs> and the best way to get around a big state is with an airplane. And we'd agree. Paul here up AOPA Live. Thanks, Paul. It was a great day. Really fun to be there and uh, looking forward to the next one. Your AOPA sweepstakes debonair made the trek to San Marcos, but this is the last time you'll see it in its present state. The decals, they're coming off, and it goes in for final paint in the next few days. And that's the finishing touch before we give it away after July 31st. Look for the finished paint job at upcoming aviation events. And speaking of upcoming events, that would be the AOPA fly-in in Indianapolis just 30 days from now. You can find everything you need to know about our next fly-in at aopa.org slash fly dash in. Be sure to RSVP so we know you're coming. And remember, there is such a thing as a free lunch if you're an AOPA member. And besides drooling over the sweepstakes debonair, there is something else you can do at our fly-ins and at some other aviation events. Sign our giant third-class medical petition. AOPA President Mark Baker put his name on the first line, followed by hundreds more at San Marcos, including yours truly, on line 1812, as in the war of. We want to send a clear message to officials. Pilots are ready for them to take action. The petition will be at the Indy Fly-In and other events throughout the summer. And while the FAA bureaucracy is working with all deliberate speed to come up with its ideas on how to safely reduce medical certification requirements, Things are moving forward in Congress. 
We now have 108 co-sponsors in the House and Senate for the General Aviation Pilot Protection Act. Let's just call that a very reliable and viable Plan B. And Congress is still concerned about the warrantless stops and searches of GA pilots, as is AOPA, of course. Sadly, reports of pilots being met with guys in uniforms carrying guns are still coming into AOPA. You can read about the most recent ones on AOPA.org. In one case, a father and his disabled son had barely parked their aircraft in Marion, Illinois, when some 18 uniformed and civilian clothed officers ran toward them. The local officers were directed to detain the pilot and his son because of their long flight from California. It was, quote, suspicious, they said. The only contraband found? A container of sea salt. AOPA will use every possible tool to stop these violations of pilots' Fourth Amendment rights. And that includes going right to the top. AOPA President Mark Baker on Wednesday had what the diplomats call a frank discussion with the newly confirmed head of Customs and Border Protection. We got Mark on his iPad shortly after that meeting. It was a really good meeting. And uh, first off, I want to thank the uh, members who brought this to our attention and uh, making sure that we were passing on the appropriate concerns about innocent citizens being stopped or encountered, as they like to call it. So because of our members, we got their attention. I'm very excited about the words uh, from the top down. Uh, we'll make sure that the actions are followed uh, by asking members to continue to brief us if there are other incidents. But I think uh, there's a good chance we got what we wanted on this. Until it gets to be where there are zero uh, stops of innocent people, I won't be happy. Uh, but they are already acknowledged that there are going to be less stops in the future. I think the, uh, the general and the commissioner expressed their, uh, their concern about interrupting private citizens along the way. And, and uh, they understand that the freedom to fly is very important to our members and that they shouldn't be harassed. And so that was from the top down. Mark said that at least at the top, CBP recognizes that AOPA members could be the best supporters of the mission of keeping the border secure, and CBP doesn't want to lose the confidence of the citizens. And that's all well and good, but in the meantime, you might want to keep a copy of AOPA's CBP checklist with you. If you're stopped by law enforcement, it'll guide you through the things you should do and the questions you should ask. You'll find the check uh, checklist on AOPA.org. Well, three environmental groups are petitioning the EPA to declare that emissions from GA aircraft may endanger public health or welfare. The issue is lead. But the environmentalists seem to be ignoring the significant progress now being made toward a universal unleaded aviation fuel. It's unclear as to why these groups would choose to uh, repetition the EPA to make a, a determination with regards to our lead emissions, knowing that the industry is actually in a process to move to an unleaded fuel. The UAT ARC, the Unleaded Avgas Transition Aviation Rulemaking Committee, in which the EPA participated, laid the groundwork and developed um, the processes that are being put into place by the Piston Aviation Fuels Initiative. <coughs> the EPA is being kept uh, abreast and aware of all of the activity and the advancements that are being made with regards to establishing the Piston Aviation Fuels Initiative. The goal is to identify replacement fuel or fuels by 2018. Fuels, feds running rough, roughshod over pilots' rights, attempts to restrict general aviation flying. Seems like some things never change. This month marks AOPA's 75th anniversary when our founders got together at Wings Field outside of Philadelphia in 1939. They too were concerned about protecting their freedom to fly. The war was on in Europe and the feds wanted to restrict private flying for national security reasons. We devoted most of the May issue of AOPA Pilot Magazine to the last 75 years of both AOPA and general aviation history. It's a fascinating read and we're getting great feedback from our members on it. And our first members are a fascinating lot. A dozen of these charter members are still active on our roles all these years later. We talked to three of them, including Bill Bailey. so there was a gentleman in Chicago that uh, 
Perhaps the youngest pilot to join AOPA back in 1939, was Ed Adams. Clarence Clancy Hess is well known to attendees at Oshkosh and many of our AOPA events. Clancy got his flying start when air racer Johnny Livingston took the young man flying in his Ville monocoupe. And we were already talked about going around and coming for a landing. And I did just that. And uh, good God, this went on for an hour and 45 minutes. And he got out and said, go fly it, son. So I, and by his action determined, the first Clancy would later help AOPA's first employee, Doc Hartram, to find an office for the fledgling organization. He also founded Wings of Hope, and he's well known to many of us here at AOPA. It's always good talking with Clancy. Coming up after the break, first flight for the E-Fan and making flying a family affair. AOPA Live this week continues in just a moment. Welcome back. You're watching AOPA Live this week. Well, we knew this was coming. When Textron bought Beechcraft, everybody knew there would be redundancies with Cessna, and now Textron has started laying off employees. The Wichita Eagle reports 575 layoffs in Kansas. The company said the painful move was necessary to realign and strengthen the combined aircraft builders. And then a tough one for Jeppesen. A federal jury in Denver awarded a tiny Massachusetts software company more than $43 million dollars. The jury concluded that JEP had broken a deal to develop software for re uh, reading Jeppesen charts on mobile devices. JEP says it plans to appeal. Better news for Airbus Group in France. The first flight of the company's experimental E-Fan electric airplane from the Bordeaux airport. The all-composite battery-operated aircraft uses ducted variable pitch fans. This technology demonstrator can fly about 45 minutes on battery power alone. If you'd like to experience flying in France, here's a chance to do it for free, if you're between ages 18 and 24, that is. AOPA, the International Council of Aircraft Owner and Pilot Associations, and the French Aeronautic Federation are teaming up to send an American pilot to the Young Pilots Tour of France. You can find the details on how to apply on AOPA.org. And the Young Pilots Tour in France is to motivate young pilots and promote general aviation. AOPA President Mark Baker recently honored two Americans for their efforts to promote GA and protect backcountry flying. He presented AOPA presidential citations to Recreational Aviation Foundation founders Chuck Jarecki and Dan Prill during the RAF's Red Rock Roundup in Utah. The RAF was one of 10 recipients of grants from the AOPA Foundation's Giving Back program last year. Well, the Recreational Aviation Foundation was started 10 years ago by a group of six people. There's now about 6,000 of us that our mission is dedicated to saving, protecting, creating, and maintaining recreational and backcountry airstrips across the United States. It's a significant uh, dollar amount to us for sure, but uh, it's more of it's an endorsement on kind of the work that we're doing. But this particular grant we're going to use to uh, fund a noise study, a scientific noise study to measure the effects of uh, aircraft noise specifically on wildlife uh, at recreational and backcountry airstrips. You can see all of the good folks who got grants there on your screen. The AOPA Foundation is now taking applications for the 2014 Giving Back grants. You can find out more at foundation.aopa.org. And while you're there, you want to check out the Foundation's new web page. And finally, let's go back to San Marcos. It wasn't just pilots having a good time at the AOPA regional fly-in. Many of them made it a family affair. AOPA technical editor Jill Tallman found some of the youngest future pilots and those already down the path to solo. I am a, a big aviation enthusiast, have been since I was a little kid, and it's something now that I have a family, it's something that I wanted to share with them. Will Binford and his wife Allison brought their young daughter out to see the airplanes. They're not alone. 
Many families made a day out of the AOPA San Marcos regional fly-in, like Scott and Jean Friend. We really wanted to do a fly-in. Um, we've tried and haven't been able to, and this time it was perfect. And uh, we are able to bring our little daughter in and have a wonderful day. And nice that it was so close to home, not having to go all the way to California. So yes. having this local was great for us because we are just out of Houston. So it was a nice hour hop over here. Their daughter, Mackenzie, isn't even a year old but she's already used to flying GA. The carriers are home building an RV-12 together and taking glider lessons. And what do you like about flying? It's, it's relaxing. It's, yeah. And it's quiet in glider, huh? Yeah, it's quiet. It's nice. <laughs> you still hear the wind, which is good to help you with speed control. There's so much to see, even the little ones held interest in the event. Definitely wanted to get, get uh, this guy to go see some aircraft, so. He loves airplanes, and this is the perfect place to see a whole lot of cool ones. In San Marcos, Texas, Jill Tolman, AOPA Live. Thanks, Jill. Always great to see the kids out at the airport. I hope you'll bring your young ones to a fly-in in your region. And that does it for us this week. We hope to see you back here next Thursday for another edition of AOPA Live this week. Until then, I'm Tom Haynes. Tailwinds to y'all.